Let's go to church. Let's go to church. Let's go to church. Let's go to church. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go to church. Let's praise the Lord. Let's give the song. We don't want to Let's worship in the company of the saints. Let's be the one that in my display. Let's go to church. Come on. Hello, 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 everyone. Happy Sunday to you and your loved ones. I believe you had a great time in God's presence today. The service was powerful. There was a great session of prayer, a great session of worship and fellowship with the brethren. I'm sure you also had a great time in God's presence. Welcome to another episode of Sunday Reminder. And today, I want to remind us not to be intimidated. Do not be intimidated by whatever, by whoever, by any event that is happening around us as children of God, especially by others, by the gift and the talent others are displaying in the house of the Lord. To be intimidated means to be frightened, to be fearful, to lack confidence because you have placed someone or something on a high pedestal and you believe that you cannot attain to such a person. To be intimidated means to be held back by feelings of fear, inability to become the best that you are supposed to be because of feelings of inadequacy in one way or the other. Sadly, many of us have not reached our full potential as children of God because we have looked down on ourselves. We have looked down on the gift and the talent we have. We have looked down on our strength and we have magnified our weaknesses. We have listened to that voice in us, telling us you cannot be something. You cannot be who the Lord has called you to be. We can only sit down and look at the future. We can only dream and see visions. But when it is time to actualize them, when it is time for us to stand up and take steps to ensure these dreams are fulfilled, we shrink back into our shell because we believe that we have failed and we cannot attain to this high level the Lord is calling us to come to. Many of us are always looking at other people and say, oh, I cannot do it like sister this. I cannot do it like brother that. I cannot do it like pastor that. And because I cannot do that, it means I am not good enough. Remember, we are all different and uniquely created by our master. So whatever gift you have, whatever strength you have is enough for the work he has given unto us. We should stop writing ourselves off because the Lord has not written us off. We should celebrate the gift and talent of others. We should celebrate the grace of God upon others. You know, it is very, very important for us to do that. But don't do it to the point that you make that brother or that sister diastic for your own performance or for your own shining. Some of us believe if I cannot sing like this person, I am not good enough. And many of us are killing ourselves. When I was growing up, there were so many worship leaders with their unique voices, with their unique talent. We had Don Mwen, we had Darlene Zek, we had Ron Kennelly, we had um, W. Smith, and many people like that. And when you listen to their music, you can see that it is always different. From my country, we have people like Sinach. And Tokwe Alabi, Evangelist Ayewa, so many people like this, that when they sing, you can hear the distinction in their voices. They don't try to become like others. Initially, when some of them start singing, people will be like, oh, this voice does not sound like this one. But by the time they were consistent with their ministry, now when you hear such voice, without even looking at the video, you can recognize this is this person's voice. So why are we trying to become like others? Because we are intimidated by their success, by their gift, by their talent, by their charisma. No, 
God has created each and every one of us to be unique and different. And we are all a masterpiece. So we should not minimize the grace and the calling of the Lord upon our life because we are trying to become like others. You can only become their copy. You cannot become the original when you're trying to become like others. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. In our quest to be the best, you can go for trainings, you can improve your skills and mentorship programs, but never ever become someone else's copy because you are intimidated by them. Do not become it because then even God himself will not recognize you again. You have diluted yourself. You have changed from who he has called you to be to become who he has not called us to be. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. No one should be our yardstick to the point that we neglect following Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master. Many of us, the Holy Spirit is giving us inspiration on how God wants us to walk with him, to do the ministry. But no, we rather want to follow this person that has had this kind of encounter. This is how they got their encounter. This is how they got their power. It is good to learn from others, but make sure that you are learning in accordance to what the Lord wants you to do. Do not go away from the path the Lord has given unto you because you want to become like others. We are all different. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to remember that every gift and every talent we have is given by the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians 2, verse 8 to 10, For by grace we have been saved, through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God created us as his workmanship. He knows what exactly he wants us to do. Just like when you are building a project, there's a screw that goes to a particular hole. If you have some of these gadgets, maybe a treadmill, there could be up to 10 different screws, even up to 20 different screws that we go into a particular place. Different shapes, different sizes, different width, different length. I remember when we bought one of our exercise machine and my husband was trying to assemble it. You know, they gave us the manual, the step-by-step -step on how to couple it. And I was telling my husband, okay, let me read it to you so that we can do it. And at a point, my husband was saying, no, I can see this is where it fits. This is where it goes in. And then he decided to do it by himself. When he finished coupling it, it was making some sound. You know, when he wanted to use it, it wasn't working well. Till he had to sit with that manual. That manual he believed was nothing. He had to sit with it. Learn it line by line. Identify its crew. I didn't, because you know, it comes with pictures, it comes with diagrams, you know, they try to put you through so that you don't have to stress. After he went through the right goal of following it line by line, preset upon preset, we got it. The same thing with us. Remember, God has created you to fit into a particular place in his project. And no matter how much you panabit yourself or you pad yourself to fit into another place, you will only go there to make noise. You will only go there to cause troubles because that is not where God has called you to be. Some people are forcing themselves to be worship leaders now. Some people are forcing themselves to be in a ministry God has not called them to be. God has called you to be in a help ministry, but you want to be in a leadership ministry. God has called you to help behind the scene, but you want the spotlight to be on you. That is why the noise is going on. That is why there is friction. Because you are trying to do something God has not fashioned you to do. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do the good work which he had foreknown. He had created. He knows where you are supposed to fit in. Allow the master to put you where he has created you to be. 
Don't be intimidated by others. Don't change to become who you were not created to be. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't be intimidated by the gift, the charisma, the lifestyle, the noise, the energy of other believers. We are all created uniquely and we are created to complete each other, to help each other in fulfilling destiny, not to compete with each other. We are not to be in competition with others. Our goal should be to promote Christ in all ways. Promote Christ in all ways. Don't be in a position that you are dominating over others because of the gift the Lord has given you. No one is an island. You cannot live your life alone. Like the part of the body, if the eyes decides to say, I am the most important, I see. You all cannot see, even the brain, and decides to take itself out. The eyes is dead. That is why in John 15, he says, when you are taken out of the vine, you become ordinary wood. And all you are good for is just to be burnt and used for cooking. Do not take yourself out because you believe you are more important than others or because you believe you are not important. In the book of 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4 to 7 and verse 11, Amplified Version, it says, Now there are distinctive varieties of spiritual gifts, which are special abilities given by the grace and extraordinary power of the Holy Spirit operating in believers. There are diverse gifts, that the Lord has given to believers. But it is the same spirit that is working this gift in us. It is the same spirit who empowers us and grants this gift unto us. And there are also distinctive varieties of ministries and service, but it is the same Lord that is being served. We are serving the same Lord, either the technical unit that is making sure that the sound is perfect, that is making sure that the lyrics are projected, or the worship leader that is seen and singing, or the drummer that is behind the scene, or the backup singers. Every one of us are doing something to ensure everybody is serving the same Lord. The fact that you are the one singing, you are the one leading, does not mean that every other person is doing nothing. And the fact that you are backing up does not mean you are doing nothing. If you are a worship leader, I'm sure you can agree with me. If you are to lead a worship or praise and you don't have backup singers, or your backup singers are not singing out, hey, that is the day you will appreciate backup singers. The day that your keyboardists or your drummers are not there, or the ones you have, you have not rehearsed with them, and you are singing on C, they are playing D or F for you. That is when you will appreciate people that are behind the scene. The day you are trying to sing and your microphone is not working, or the lyrics is not projected and you mistakenly forgot the lyrics, that is the day you will appreciate all those people that we believe their job is not as important as the teacher, as the pastor, as the worship leader, or whatever it is that we are doing in the house of the Lord. Do not be intimidated by the gift and talent of others. And don't intimidate others by your gift and your talent. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Verse 6 says, And there are distinctive ways of working to accomplish things. But it is the same God who produces all things in all believers. He inspires us, energizes, and empowers us. So when you see that person that is energetic, always going from A to B, this person is in choir, is in teaching, is in technical, he knows how to do electrical works, he knows how to take care of children. Don't look at them and assume they do all this by their own power. The Bible says it is God that is energizing them. And whatever you are doing, don't feel above. Don't put yourself up and say, I can do all this because of my power. No, it's because of the power of God that is within us. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Verse 7 says, And to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit, the spiritual illumination, and the enabling of the Spirit for the common good. Whatever gift you have is for the common good of the body of Christ. 
is to ensure the body of Christ is growing, is to ensure that the gospel is preached to the ends of the earth. Do not be intimidated and don't let the gift and calling of anyone intimidate you. Verse 11 says, all these things, the gift, the achievement, the ability, the empowering are brought about by one and same Holy Spirit, distributing to each one individually just as he chooses. It is God that decides who is going to have this gift or that gift. In the book of Matthew chapter 25, when Jesus told his disciples the parable of the talent, there was a wealthy man that was going to a far country and decided to give his servant some talent, some gift to profit with till he comes back. We read in verse 14 and verse 15 of that passage, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servant and delivered his goods to them. Verse 15 says, And to one he gave five talents, to another he gave two, to another he gave one, to each according to his own ability. To each according to his own ability. That gift and talent you have is according to your own ability. Another version says, to the grace that they have. He has given you according to your own ability. Don't fight for another person's gift when you don't have that ability. The God that gave you the gift knows the ability you have. He has crafted you. He has woven you with the ability you need. I pray the Lord will help us to focus on our gift and our calling and not be envious of others in Jesus' name. James 1.17 says, Every good and every perfect gift is from above, from the Father of light, in whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. Every good and every perfect gift. Whatever gift and talent you have been given, don't just believe or assume it just fell on you. No, God has given it to you to profit with, to work for him, not to go and profit the kingdom of darkness. So every good and every perfect gift you see others displaying is because God has gifted it to them. Celebrate them and use the gift God has given to you as well to do what he has asked you to do. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Many of us keep being intimidated. And like that man with one talent, we have buried our talent. Because we keep looking at the five talents of others, at the two talents of others, and then we look at our own talent and we become sad. Ah, <laughs> how can God give me just this one talent? When he gave brother Timothy five, he gave sister Grace two, he gave me, me, a whole HOD, a whole pastor, a whole pastor's wife, a whole deacon and deaconess have been in this church for 20 years. He only gave me one, one talent. I'm not going to do anything with this talent. I'm going to bury it. And he did not profit with his talent. But look at what happened with the man with five talents. The Bible said he profited with it. He gained five more, making ten. And when God was going to collect that one talent, he gave it to the person that had a lot already. Because he has shown by his own actions that truly I have the ability to multiply the gift that's given to me. Many of us, that one gift that God has given unto us, all we can do is to grumble and murmur. We have not worked on that gift for one single season. And we keep complaining. God has not given me more. God is not a waster. If you keep being intimidated by the gift of others, you will not work with your own gift. That gift you have buried, sister and brothers, go and take it. It's time to use that gift. You keep complaining, I don't have the gift. That one gift God has given you, even if it is to talk, if it is to organize, if it is to take care of the children, first start using it and see if God will not give you the ability to manage more. Our God is not a waster. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So stop comparing the gift and talent of others to your own gift. Focus on your gift. When you focus on your gift, you are able to develop it. When you focus on your gift, you are able to perfect that gift the Lord has given unto you. When you focus on your gift, you are able to do great exploits from it. But when you are looking at the gift and blessings of others, instead of counting your own blessing, you are a master at counting the blessing of others. 
you are a master at knowing the gift and talent of others. But when they ask you, what is your own talent? You don't know. What is your own purpose? You don't know. But you can know the gift and talent of others. Because you are distracted, you are intimidated, you are envious by their own gifts and talents. And when the master of the house came back and asked for their gift, what did he do to the one? He took back his talent and said, put him out into the darkness. He is an ungrateful servant. I hope that kind of word, I hope that kind of judgment will not be our portion also. Where is your gift? and the talent the Lord has given unto you. You have eaten it because you see others displaying theirs and you feel mine will not make any difference. It is not in comparison with others. Whatever God has given you, it is for you. The Bible says, when we compare ourselves with others, we are fools. We are not wise. We see that in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. By comparing themselves with themselves, they are fools. They are not wise. I pray that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Many of us are comparing our own morning with another person's afternoon and evening. When did you start your ministry? two years ago. Now you're comparing the success of your ministry with someone that started their ministry 30 years ago. Some people did not start their ministry from the scratch. They started where their parents left off from, but you're still comparing your own with those set of people. When did you give your life to Jesus? When did you become serious with your spiritual journey with Christ? And you are comparing yourself with people that started their journey from childhood. And that is why you keep getting discouraged. That is why you keep getting sad. That is why you have not done exploit. Because you are taking more time to compare your life with others. Instead of walking in the path the Lord has ordained for us. This Sunday, don't forget... Don't be intimidated and do not intimidate others. Rather, focus on your journey. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Some of us are in the middle. Some of are already in the latter part of their journey. And you are just starting your journey. Do not be intimidated by their success. Rather, learn from their success. Learn from their mistakes so that it can make you a better person as you go forward. Accept wherever you are right now. Grow in the process. Gain experience and wisdom in your journey. I'll say that again. Accept wherever you are now. In your journey in the Lord. In your ministry. Accept it. But don't stay there. Grow in the process. Gain experience and wisdom in your journey. And very, very important. Be content with what you have. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 6 verse 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Be contented with what the Lord has given you. Don't try to pull what God has not given you. Don't try to be who the Lord has not called you to be. Don't try to copy others. You can only become a copy when the Lord has ordained you to be a masterpiece. God has given you a beautiful voice. Now you are trying to make the voice to be what the Lord has not given you. God has given you inspirations on how to teach, inspirations on how to organize, but you don't want to be like that. You want to be in the front of the camera to foil our lust. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let us remember, when you are intimidated by someone's gift and talent, you are also likely to want to intimidate others that you believe are not as good or as talented as you. When you allow yourself to be intimidated, when you allow yourself to be frightened, when you allow yourself to be limited by the success and glory of others, you are also likely to intimidate others. Because you believe you are more gifted or better than them. And this can lead to pride and self-glorification. Let us watch ourselves. Let us not allow pride and self-glorification.
to grow in us because that is how the devil lost his place in heaven. We will not lose our place in divine agenda in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, when we allow ourselves to be intimidated or we intimidate others, we give room for ingratitude because we will not appreciate what we have. Always appreciate what you have, the gift you have. Even if it is the days of little beginning, keep at it. The Bible says, do not despise the days of little beginning because at the end it shall be great. The vision might just be a little now. Keep at it. Keep working at it. Your gift might still be rustic and raw. It doesn't mean that it's not going to bring forth glory at the end. When you see a raw material, all it needs is process. All it needs is to go through the right channel for it to come out as a diamond or as gold. So do not run away from the process the Lord wants to put you through. Follow the process. Don't be in a hurry. Don't run ahead of God and you will come out shining as the star the Lord has created you to be in Jesus' name. Also, when you allow yourself to be intimidated, you will not be fruitful. This is a cause of fruitlessness as a child of God. When you allow yourself to be intimidated or you are intimidating others with your gift, it leads to fruitlessness. You are busy counting the blessings of others. While you are bearing your own blessing, look at that brother, he has five blessings. Look at that brother, he has ten blessings. Look at that sister, she has eight blessings and I only have one. I will rather bury myself. I will rather lift this gift and then you go and steal the gift of others. You go and take the gift that you don't have the grace to grow. And this leads to frustration. This leads to spiritual death. Let us wake up as children of God. Let us wake up. Let us wake up. In what way have you buried your talent because you are busy comparing yourself with others? Or in what ways have you taken what God has not given unto you? I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I want to plead with as many of us that are in this shoe, that are in this journey of comparison, of intimidation, Either you have been intimidated or you are intimidating others to stop and come back to God. Because when you continue in this journey, what it leads to is a web of competition, unhealthy competition. We have seen unhealthy competition in the body of Christ, in which a minister, a pastor, a leader will be badmouthing others. Or will even go as far as employing demonic manipulation to bring others down. Ha! Why? If the goal is heaven, if the goal is soul winning, why should we try to bring down our brothers and sisters that are also working towards the same goal? Why should we bring them down? We are now becoming agents of darkness. We are being used by the devil to bring down the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ has said it. The gate of hell shall not prevail. It is a fruitless effort. To fight against the kingdom of God. I pray the Lord will help us open our eyes and help us to change our ways in any way we are going against his will in Jesus name. Stop empowering the gate of hell. Stop walking against the body of Christ. Do not allow intimidation to make you a weakling. When the Bible says those that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. You are not created to be a weakling. You are not created to live in fear. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of sound mind. You have not been created to come to this world and just go back the same. You have been created to be a powerhouse. You have been created to be a trailblazer. You have been created to do great and mighty signs and wonders for the Lord. Do not be intimidated. Whenever you are intimidated by the success and the gift of others, you cannot fulfill destiny. And that is why today I want to remind us that God has created us uniquely. You cannot live or become exactly like A or B or C or D. You are unique with the gift and the talent the Lord has given you. Use it for the Lord, 
Focus on the Lord. Focus on his will. Focus on the purpose of the Lord for you. And you shall see yourself coming out great and fulfilling destinies in Jesus' name. Amen. And finally, the way to overcome every spirit of fear or intimidation is to know God for yourself. The Bible says, those that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. Do you know God? Do you know the word of the Lord for you? Do you know the purpose of God for your life? Discover it. Read through the word of God. Be prayerful. Have a close walk with the Lord. And no situation, no circumstance, no person will be able to intimidate you in any way. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And let us pray. Father, we thank you for today, the grace you have given us to come to your presence. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us once again. We ask that you give us the grace, Lord, not to be intimidated or fearful in any way in Jesus' name. Father, we receive the grace to follow your will. Receive the grace, Lord, to stand up and do exploit in the name of Jesus. Help us to discover ourselves. Help us to know you. Help us, Lord, to follow you in all ways you have called us to be in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for you've done it. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, to share, to comment, and to subscribe to this channel if this has blessed you. And today is Sunday. Did you go to church? Today is Sunday. Sister, go to church. Today is Sunday. Did you go to church? My brother, do have a blessed day ahead. Shalom. God bless you.